Hello beautiful people of the world and welcome to a new PD tutorial. In this video we're going to start to work on our sample slicer. So the first thing that you want to do of course is to create a new array and I already have your mine and just a reminder you can go to the put menu and click on array or use the shortcut. Now in the last video we talked about the sound file object and we learned that we have to use a message box to load an audio file into an array. So I already have my message box with the read command, the resize flag, the name of the audio file I'm going to upload into the array and since I have my patch saved in the same folder where the audio file is located, I don't have to specify any path here, otherwise you have to specify the path on your hard drive and of course the name of the array where the file must be uploaded. Okay, so as you can see the patch today is already uh, finished. Again, for every tutorial just ignore this part here, it's just to uh, record the things that I do and to then edit them into the final video, so just ignore this. And we will focus on these objects here. Okay, so when I upload the file into my array, as you can see, the waveform appear in the, into the array and the sound file object gives us the number of samples the audio file is made of. So this is the total number of samples that the file is made of, so it's roughly uh, 15 seconds. And since my audio file is recorded at 48 kilohertz, I am working with 48 kilohertz in PD. Now to change this, you go to the media menu, audio settings, and here you can change the sample rate. So I have already 48 kilohertz, but if you have a different number, you can set 48 kilohertz here. You can save all settings, apply, and okay, and close it. So the sample rate of the audio file you're using, you're going to use, has to be the same sample rate you're working with PD. Okay, now, if I want to know how many seconds uh, the, file, the audio file lasts, I have to divide the number of samples, the total number of samples of the file by the number of samples in one second. So this is the total number of samples that the sound file is made of. And if I divide it by 48,000, which is the samples in one second, I have, so basically the duration of the audio file in seconds. Okay, so this information is really useful because we're going to use it to create our random sample slicer. Now let's start from the bottom. In the last tutorial, in the last video, we also learned to use the top play object to play the entire array from, from start to end by sending to it a bang. Now, if we want to read a specific small portion of the array, we can send to the top play object, as if we go to the help file, we can see that we can send two numbers, a list of two numbers. These two numbers are the starting point, so the number of sample we want the top play object to start reading the array, and for how many samples we want to read the content of the array. Now, samples here, of course, being an array, are the indexes. If you don't remember what indexes are, there is the first and second videos of this small series dedicated to the arrays, and check them out. You can find the tab up in the right corner. Okay, so basically we have to send a list of two numbers to the top play object to read a small portion of the array, and the first number is the starting point, so where it has to start to read, and for how many samples. And that's where the pack object comes in handy. So the pack object basically creates a message of any number or of any element that we feed to it. And the creation arguments can be, for instance, the letter F, which stands for float, which is a number that is given to it by another object, in this case, the random object. The creation arguments, of course, can be 
also a specific number. Now, why it is 48,000? Well, because for one second of audio at 48 kilohertz of sample rate, 48,000 samples are one second of sound. So that's pretty much easy to understand. So this means that we are going to read from a random starting point for 48,000 samples, so basically one second. So this is our sample slicer. So we have a bang to trigger the slice, we have a random object to start from any given point in the array, and our slices are going to last for one second. Now, you can change this if you want, but just for now, just let's stay with one second. So if I turn it on and I hit the bang, So basically, I am reading different slices, and each slice is made of 48,000 samples, so it's one second long. Now, if you remember, the random object needs a creation argument or a value sent to its right inlet, and in this case, we are using the number of total samples that the sound file is made of, minus 48,000. Now, this is because we want to avoid starting from the very end of the array, so we will not basically have enough samples to read. So basically, we want to make sure that the random object is not going to give us a starting point number, which is basically in the last second of our audio file, because basically we won't have enough samples to read at the end of the array. So this is just a safe mechanism for the random object. But basically, we are using the total number of samples minus one second of audio, so the last part of the array, to feed to the random object. And basically, every time that we bang, it's going to start from a random point into the array. So it kind of seems complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. So let's recap what we're doing here. This part here, we already know from the last video. This is just a basic math operation to know how many seconds our loop is long. This is a safe mechanism that basically says to the random object, start from any point in the array, but not in the last second of audio. Why? Because we want our slices to be one second long. So every time we press the bang, the random object generates a random starting point into the array, and it feeds this number into the pack object, which basically say to the top play object, read from this starting point, generated by the random object, and read 48,000 samples. So one second of the array, of the sound file. So we are basically creating random slices, but every slice is one second long. Now, if we want the slices to be half second, we just have to make, instead of 48,000 samples, 24,000. So 24,000 samples are half a second. And again, if, if we try it out, they are shorter. If we want to have them one quarter of a second, just use, oh, sorry, half the number. Well, one quarter of 48,000. So again, And as you can see in this object here, we have the starting point, 
and how many samples we are going to play, so how many seconds we are going to play. And again, 48,000 samples are one second. Okay, so this is it for today. It seems a bit complicated, but if you think about it, it's not really that much complicated. If you have any questions, write them down in the comment section and I will answer to them as soon as I can. And if this is not really clear, let me know in the comments and I will make a follow-up video to this one to clarify things even better. Okay, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, hit like, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.